earlier and also an head uh, for Execom of Bamboo Bootcamp. So uh, on to our topic, what will be what we call as bamboo utilization. So in bamboo utilization or technically utilization uh, per se has uh, four factors. So one is the utilization, what type of product you will be going to make, and then who will be the end users or the market, and thereby from this utilization, the types of job that you will be creating for people, or even how the jobs will protect the environment and vice versa. This is a complete cycle on the utilization and industry for bamboo. Even if there's no industry in bamboo, um, this would still be the same cycle that you will be doing. So let's talk about uh, the basic supply chain of bamboo. So there are only three uh, for this. We clustered into three main clusters. So first will be the supply of bamboo, meaning how will you source your bamboo? Where will you get your bamboo and how you will be harvesting it? And then processing. When we say processing, this is the treatment or any alteration or, or after, ano, after, after harvesting process that you will be doing for bamboo. And finally, it's the type of utilization that you will be doing. Of course, me as an architect and uh, also for Bamboo Bootcamp, our main utilization will be really uh, construction uh, through, through education and a quick uh, Bamboo Bootcamp. So of course, uh, Bamboo Bootcamp wants to be an innovative mentor um, together with agri-food and agri-forest commerce. Uh, and we wanted to make a sustainable proof of concept starting specifically here in the Philippines. So our mission is really to teach you guys about the full supply chain of bamboo, starting from supply, processing, and then utilization. So let's start with the supply for a uh, supply uh, cluster of bamboo. So when we talk about supply of bamboo, uh, all over the Philippines, we are seeing, uh, people are saying there, there's plenty of bamboo in the Philippines. But however, um, if you've you've gone to the you've gone to provinces places they really is bamboo uh, it's in the backyard in the forest or it is very sporadic but there's no large plantations at hand maybe maybe less than 10 hectares or there are there are known plantations that are uh, around hundreds of hectares but it's really hard to find so that's why the nr is ramping up uh, propagation of bamboo because number one there's two uh, first is planting new bamboo second is how do you take care of the existing clumps because when you have existing clumps of bamboo you will need to take care of it you will need to um, protect it from you know, from from overcrowding so that you will have nicer poles or products and then you will also have to to add the uh, mulching, add some nutrients from it, uh, all organic nutrients in order to stabilize your supply for bamboo. And once you have done this, uh, that's the only time you will be able to process it and process it and then utilize it. And in the Philippines, we, we are looking at maybe some uh, relevant species, for example, around 10 species starting from the top. We have the Kawaiintinik or the Bambusa Blumeniana, the strongest one among the Philippine variants that that are present here in the Philippines. Um, this is uh, introduced 100 years ago, coming from the Southeast Asian nations into the Philippines, but it grew well. Then you have the giant bamboo, or sometimes it's called botong, or sometimes uh, butong uh, in different regions, but uh, it's technically dendrocalamus asper, the giant bamboo. Uh, in Bukidnon, this is, this is very prevalent in Bukidnon, uh, in, the, in the plantation fields. And then you have bayog or the bambusa meridiana, which is very, this is the only endemic species here in the Philippines that I, I do know of. Uh, please do add if you have uh, other species that you know, also the bolo. And these four we often use for uh, structural applications. And then you go to the soft, soft applications, meaning uh, non-structural non load bearing, which we often see now uh, through fences, through through decorative uh, cladding, such as uh, laak, kawayan killing. And then you also have anos or the Sisotachium lima, 
Uh, we use this for straws. And then, of course, the most famous buho, very prevalent here in the Philippines. And then pole bamboo, but which we often see used for landscape and ornamentals. And, of course, um, the strength of bamboo can be, you know, can be seen due to its vascular bundles or the thousands of pipes that you will see inside the bamboo. Uh, and that uh, makes, it, uh, makes the, the strength of bamboo um, one-third of steel and then equivalent to 3,000 PSI or the compressive uh, bearing weight of concrete at 3,000 PSI. <laughs> okay. And then uh, we go to some specifics, which is basically um, when you are stabilizing your supply, the type of pole utilization or the type or the age of the poles has an effect on your processing and your utilization because for age to, there's difference. For age uh, 30 days, you can use it for food. And then for around six months to one year, uh, often it's being used for woven panels because uh, the softness of bamboo uh, it still has not reached its maximum capacity. And then at two years or more, Sometimes we use it for splits, we use it for blinds, and then at three years and up, uh, specifically for me personally, I use four to six year old. Um, we use it for structural application and laminated applications or engineered bamboo. And oftentimes, um, the uh, age classification of bamboo is very needed when you are going to the field. One, you can check on the generational branching of bamboo and number two on the right side, the more uh, the more prevalent the algae is, the algae is the white the white spots that you will be seeing on the on the you know, on the canes or the pole of the bamboo. The more prevalent it is, the more higher the pole age is. So so that is you know, that is very needed when you're trying to stabilize your supply for bamboo because you for, for, because again number one uh, different uses means different age requirement for bamboo, okay? And then uh, once you, you, I know you have that, you also have to look at bamboo on the grander scheme of things. Where is the root strata of bamboo? Where is the canopy, canopy coverage of bamboo? And uh, as you can see from this diagram, bamboo is located on the mid portion of, uh, of uh, the, you know, the root stratification in the forest layers. So it is, it is shallow rooted. Uh, and which means you have to partner it with other species, specifically the dipterocarps with, uh, with uh, deep roots and also some cash crops that will help out your, your, you know, your farm. Uh, and uh, when, we say, when we say bamboo forest, we say maybe 60% is bamboo or maybe even 40%, it depends. But we combine it with fruit trees, with dipterocarps, with nitrogen fixing um, species. And also, you you uh, know you plan it out with water in mind, and then uh, you protect your homestead as uh, as seen in this diagram. From the homestead, you will have your herb garden, your crops, and then as you go out, uh, you will have thin thin vegetations, and then going outside, you have your protective protective uh, barrier together with bamboo to block out winds or to create a shared shelter belt, and also a fire retardant. Uh, well, uh, you can use Caliandra and all. So uh, in, the, in trying to establish a supply for bamboo, if you're starting a bamboo forest, you have to plan it like this. And once you have this type of uh, principle, you will be able to design your, your own um, bamboo-based uh, development such as this, where you have uh, a treatment center, a complete, complete uh, accommodations, and then a food forest. And then amidst, amidst this, you try to mix up the number of bamboo species in your, in, your, know, in your development. So there's one for structural applications, there's one for crafts, there's one for ornamentals, and there's one maybe for you know, specifically for food. So those types of uses. And once you have that, that supply, you, we can now go to processing. And uh, when it comes to processing, so the diagram goes uh, from, you know, from the lower right. Once you have the bamboo, you will, you will, and you will, it will undergo a selection process through a quality control. Once uh, there's cracks or rejects, we it undergoes another process, which is charcoalization, which we can use for the gardens as a compost or a soap, uh, as a activated charcoal for soap or even uh, deodorizers. 
And um, for those posts that, un that underwent uh, the quality control and passed the process, there's two types of utilization. Number one is you go for raw poll. Uh, this one you can use for construction. Or the other one is you try to split it up and then you laminate it together. You bind it with glue, you, you bind it with resin, which can be used for furniture or other um, applications, okay? And uh, this cycle goes on and on. And uh, uh, in the Philippines, we will see plenty of uh, treatment facilities, specifically in Tarlac, you have in Batangas, you have in, in Mindanao, Davao, uh, uh, Panabo, Bukidnon. So uh, those treatment facilities. And when it comes to processing, uh, you will be number one, uh, trying to correctly harvest uh, the bamboo. Uh, we should veer away from clear cutting the whole clump. And, uh, and again, uh, when you're stabilizing the supply, you need to only take what you need, meaning uh, if it's for construction, I just take the four to six year old. If it's for weaving, I will just take the three year old. So, and vice versa. Doing this, we protect our supply. And when we say treatment, we are just removing the starch and sugar contents of the fibers of bamboo so that it will not be attacked by insect borders uh, such as termite and the uh, powder post beetle or the uh, bok, bok Okay. And we do that through a myriad of, uh, of methods such as soaking uh, or PSI through pressure, uh, natural transpiration, and even heat, heat applied uh, applications such as ano, torching or even smoking. Um, here, you'll have to use uh, borax, boric acid. That's what we use because there are, they are uh, natural boron salts that we use um, because number one, borax is a insect repellent and then boric acid is a pyrotardant. So we infuse it inside the bamboo. And then when you do your processing, it's best to cut the bamboo first and then treat it at afterwards. This is where you infuse your borax and boric acid and whatever chemicals that, that you will be needing in order to treat your bamboo against insect attacks and borer attacks. Uh, here are some examples of this, such as uh, you can do this without uh, minimal energy through vertical soak diffusion, such as this. And we use dyes, um, te an aniline textile dye, in order to, do, to double check the penetration of the treatment solution to the inside of the bamboo. You can also do a simulated river treatment system such as this uh, located in Davao, and it can be even be tastefully done. <laughs> so a waterfall style uh, flowing water because um, indigenous, indigenous style, people have been treating bamboo by, by submerging them in lakes, submerging them in rivers uh, over time. And this have lasted a lifetime these structures, which we'll be showing uh, later on. Some of the other styles, you can do it um, DIY style with a, with a modified pressure tank. And um, if looking at the government support, uh, the, the, the DTI standard, Bureau of Philippine Standards already has a, you know, a standard specification for each of the bamboo applications. So from engineered bamboo, to grading of bamboo palms and even charcoal, the Bureau of Philippine Standards already has a manual for this. So for you guys, it would be good to see um, uh, this manuals in order to, to know the, the type of processing that you will be needing in order to achieve the product that you are targeting. Um, in, in, uh, in construction, the indigenous style of treatment uh, this one, uh, for example, 1988 is still standing. Some, some, you know, some examples such that when bamboo is treated properly, designed well in protection against moisture and rain, and seated on top of a uh, non-damp uh, foundation, it's going to last a lifetime. We are very familiar with our bangerahan or the kitchen that we are seeing in the Bahay Kubo, or even in Panay, some houses in Panay, uh, 1988, that are still standing right now. And uh, we give reference to the type of architecture or the details that, that these houses have been using. Uh, some of these houses have, have survived Odette. And uh, there's really beauty 
in the in our historical uh, architectural style indigenous but this can be done in a contemporary way um some some you know, some some techniques of using this is uh, flattening bamboo which uh, we uh, can be seen here and then when you are um using bamboo the there's always a problem with the price or the or, or how much really is a bamboo structure and the answer would be if your bamboo is located maybe 20 kilometers away from your site it's really gonna uh, spike up the price of your bamboo but if your bamboo is right next to your your backyard you can even go as low as maybe around um, around 10 to 15k per square meter as long as you establish your supply for bamboo and know how to process it but uh, trucking or transportation is really the main uh, cost driver for bamboo and of course uh, some some example of how ano, how uh, the pricing for bamboo is if you if you are able to buy uh, untreated bamboo poles at 150 and then you factor in everything from harvesting handling it towards the treatment facility and then from the treatment facility treating it and then from the treatment facility uh, delivering it to your site there is a cost involved for this and that adds up to the price of constructing with bamboo and in comparison to other uh, products for example on the left would be a treated uh, pine wood um, it is number one soft wood and the dimension or the length is around 14 feet or 4.20 meter length in comparison to treated bamboo pole, which has the hardness in between soft and hardwood at six meter length, we are seeing a price of around 650 or even 100, 100 peso per linear meter of treated bamboo. So the, uh, here is the, pri uh, the price comparison between the two products. However, um, uh, two by fours, two by two, or dimensionally stable uh, lumbers would entail lesser labor as compared to round poles of bamboo that will uh, balance out with the amount of labor needed. So uh, going for bamboo is really a bespoke uh, craftsmanship level. And then finally, once you have your treated bamboo, we can now go to utilization. And in this utilization, it can go as far as from agriculture and even applications to transportation and mobility. And uh, we will go by this uh, one by one. So traditional use fish pens. I have yet to see fish pens that are that have not been attacked by. Uh, I have yet I have yet to see fish pens that uh, that were attacked by termites and insect borers. Maybe marine borers. Okay. Uh, applications on on fence and uh, propping vegetable propping. So lac is extensively used in the Mindanao area for banana propping. Uh, greenhouses and even livestock cages uh, has been using bamboo, but it should be tastefully done or tastefully designed. So there's no nothing stopping you from just uh, utilizing post and lintel, but of course, uh, the flexibility of bamboo can give you even uh, very nice designs. Uh, charcoal, higher uh, BTU, uh, blue flame, and then very re reusable applications on water purification, uh, air purification, odor, odor cancellation. So that's ano, that's part of the activated charcoal for bamboo. And then, of course, we have uh, tissue and even soap applications. Uh, in, ano, in the tourism industry, we, all, we already have uh, food and beverage for tea, for beer, and even your buffet spreads. And of course, uh, very common, the utensils uh, set. So imagine being able to secure a contract for supplying airlines, supplying long long haul train rides. So these are these are avenues for utilization. And then <laughs> we also have some, some products, a quick search in in Google for bamboo products. And the sad thing about this, uh, almost three fourths of these products shown here are imported from China because China has, has maybe 80 to 90% of the market of the whole uh, bamboo industry in terms of pole, in terms of in, uh, engineered bamboo. So I know of those. You can check the international trade data for this. Sometimes you also use it for luxury applications. 
such as this, uh, or yes, uses uh, this one combined with rattan, rattan and bamboo. And of course, clothing. And uh, there's a large demand in order to, to be more sustainable by using biomass from pellets instead of using coal. So there's a demand in Japan, the demand in Korea in order to supply it. So we need tons and tons of bamboo pellets or even biomass pellets for this. And of course, Hong Kong has a uh, culture of using skyscrapers uh, being made with scaffolding uh, using mosso bamboo. And the bamboo can be combined with modern materials. And also here in the Philippines, uh, Base Bahay through Hilti Foundation has been doing socialized housing, utilizing bamboo as the main framing, and then combining it with cement technology in order to protect the bamboo from the elements. Uh, this is in reference to the Bahareke style of uh, construction, or technically, you can remove cement, but instead use mud for this through the wattle and daub system. And then uh, Kawain Collective is a good example of showing uh, a good business model on the utilization of bamboo from raw poles and also to process or engineered bamboo uh, products from pinbu to lipak panels and even weave uh, woven panels. And then uh, as we go forward, uh, designs globally through nice furnitures and even utilization of, of uh, combination of poles together with engineered bamboo creates really nice architecture. This one is in Green School Valley. And then even small applications such as sticks, uh, we often see this in Manila Fame, um, very nice uh, designs. It's, it's really in the design side that we are lacking here in the Philippines and uh, marketing it. So we need to, again, the three, three one suppliers, so, uh, establish your supply, do your processing, and then figure out your utilization and then market it properly. Uh, as simple as this can be done as artworks and our weaving here in the Philippines, we can reference so much, so much, and you know, so much more. We can we can use more weaving patterns, uh, <laughs> despite the fact that we only use solihia oftentimes. But it it's really beautiful. And then simple applications such as a, uh, cutting the bamboo and adding lights on it really creates that ambiance and very simple applications for bamboo. And then uh, a lot of carving uh, work is being done with bamboo, not just with construction, but also for uh, small arts and crafts. So this one is in Baguio through, I know, through uh, Philippine Bamboo Foundation. And then um, eco, I know, eco tourism. this one, is, you will find this in uh, uh, Lubao, Pampanga. Uh, so they, they, you know, they did a, a, a riverside planting for Kawain Tinik, and then it was activated later on for detail and as an eco park. Also, same, uh, same we use the uh, uh, aurea for, or, the, uh, no, or the running bamboo, which is found in, uh, in Baguio. This is in Savior, Baguio. Also, some applications for transportation, uh, fal um, Banati Falcon, um, uh, engineered bamboo that can be used for modern, uh, no, modern more streamlined designs. And of course, uh, Brian McLean, uh, BAM Bikes, uh, doing intramuros tours. Uh, this is just one application for, you know, for soap applications of BAM. And then we go to my specialization, which is design. Uh, when we utilizing bamboo uh, in your design, of course, we start with the scale model or a sketch model, which we then refine into, you know, into a big, bigger, you, know, you refine the small scale model and create it into a bigger structure. And that is your, you know, your blueprint. And uh, the basis of design is number one, you need the hat in order to protect your bamboo or to protect your interiors by creating a 45 degree protections, protection through large eaves uh, towards your bamboo. And then, uh, as you can see here, we, we also use bamboo shingles for our roof. And then providing a jacket. A jacket is really to, number one, not taking out the skin because it's a natural protection of the bamboo. And then adding a finishing, finishing, uh, finishing coat to it. And then a shoe. A shoe will ensure that your bamboo will not let water seep through it, which will accelerate its, uh, its rotting. So having a foundation or even a rock 
uh, which bamboo can sit on is already a shoe. So the hat, a jacket, and the shoe, that is the basic of design for bamboo. So we often see this in our structures where we have our concrete uh, foundation or concrete pedestal where the bamboo sits on top of it. And, we, and this is echoed through all, all the construction that we are doing for Bamboo Bootcamp. And then when we design, of course, we start with the, with the scale model. And this scale model is translated to a 3D model in, in your computer, which will be analyzed by our structural engineer through the mechanical and uh, physical properties of bamboo. And then uh, this is what you will be using in order to design the joints, design um, the, you know, the moment loading, et cetera. And uh, really with bamboo, is, it's all about handcrafting a lot, of, uh, a lot of the joints. So that is the difficulty when you encounter uh, or you're working with bamboo. That's why we say it's really bespoke. And of course, in Bamboo Bootcamp, we try to do this in four days. Uh, propping up the, the skeleton structure in four days. So that, and some examples that we have been doing uh, for Bamboo Bootcamp, you will see here. So this one is in Barangay Miranda, the Milag Monolo for Teach. Uh, way back, this was the skeleton of the build after the bootcamp. And then the, and then the progress of the construction. And within less than a year, we're able to build up the structure around 108 square meters, and now it's being used as an education front for, I know, in uh, Miranda, the Milag Malola Fort Beach. So some, I know, some other pictures for it. We also have this one. So he, in the Philippines, um, uh, in our case, we are practicing first really straight poles, and then we are venturing into more uh, curve uh, forms as our carpenters uh, get more confident or get their confidence from the amount of builds that they have been doing, such as our uh, Bellflower Pavilion, which done by batch three of Bama Bootcamp. So there, pictures of them. And then being finished um, uh, less than a year later. Also in Harana, uh, we did a watchtower, but sadly, a death. A death and a storm surge <laughs> uh, destroyed uh, the foundation. Hopefully, we'll be able to rebuild it. But here are pictures of it. And when we're doing this, we also add uh, furniture lamination techniques as part of the utilization being done through construction. And we are able to create uh, very nice furnitures, and, uh, uh, which pass load tests, two people, one people. So very, uh, very workable. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah. Rix, you're, you're on mute, Rix. Sorry. Okay. Can you hear me now? All right. Thank you so much, Jed. I know you guys feel like we breezed through that <laughs> really quickly. So um, that's basically just snippets of things that you might be able to learn during the Bamboo Bootcamp. We do have two seminars, workshops coming up. One in May, May 18 to May 19 to the 28th in Bukidnon, and another one in July in Aljibe in Cebu. So um, you can, we, I think Jan has already posted the registration if you're interested, but without delaying, because Jed, 30 minutes, <laughs> I wanted to call Marvin uh, to share with us a little bit about his journey and like you know the beautiful bamboo builds hi marvs hi good evening everyone five minutes ah. <laughs> uh, five minutes ah. how are you mayong gabi sa mga bisaya who are watching also thank you miss rika and jed and the rest of bamboo bootcamp team for inviting me here to cool. share my journey with this amazing grass so hi everyone i'm marvin albert marinas architect by profession and we are uh let me share uh, let me share my slide first all right cool um cool marbs <laughs> able <laughs> have permission hold on let me see um i don't have permission to give you um jan can we give marvin permission to share his screen all right there you go you're able to share your screen now marbs 
Ayot. Thanks. There. Okay na. <laughs> so, okay. let me put my screen first. So, uh, okay. Uh, for tonight, I'll be sharing quickly a short story of our bamboo journey. So, just bear with me. So, but if you have time though, you may also visit our farm's YouTube channel. So there's another version of this story and it's a little bit longer. So ju just search for Alibi Farm uh, at this uh, page. So um, like all of us, it started when we uh, wanted an outlet from the pressure of the day-to-day -day work. And for us and my wife, Cheryl, it's the design and build world. So back in 2000, 15, we acquired a small mountain lot in Carmen, Cebu, and for years, we planned and envisioned the area to be a natural forest farm and hoping to inspire a sustainable tourism and promote natural farming in the island. So we also planted a lot of Philippine native trees and intercropped with different species of bamboo in the small one hectare farm. So uh, even though our grandparents are farmers, still it is very new to us. Uh, it's a complete opposite from our main line of work and that what we are used to. So although that doesn't stop us from combining our passion in design to farming and being a land steward. So in 2018, I joined a permaculture design course in Kulkul Farm, Bali. So basically permaculture is a creative design process on whole systems thinking and has been the turning point of our design career. So permaculture it is a harmonious integration of landscape and people, providing food, energy, shelter, and other material and non-material needs in a sustainable way. So it is also a multidisciplinary toolbox, uh, including agriculture. So it's very wide. So uh, water har harvesting, hydrology, energy, forestry, uh, wastewater management, animal systems, aquaculture, and so on. But my favorite part is the natural building systems. So after getting a brief glimpse of bamboo potential and the majestic structures in Green Village and Green School, so it is there that my interest in bamboo grew. And since there were no local courses here in the Philippines that time, so back in 2019, again, I joined the 11-day comprehensive design and build course at Bamboo University. And meeting the pioneers who took this underutilized material and transformed it into a desired material for bamboo structure was an amazing experience. In, uh, inspired by the founders, John Hardy, and the renowned design firm Ibuko and local artisans, I was eager to learn and bring back what I've learned to our community here in Cebu. So when joining their courses, like in Bamboo Bootcamp, you will learn from propagation and harvesting, design and model making, doing uh, hands-on joineries. And let me play some. So joineries and personal projects and immersion in the actual builds like the one we did in the time lapse videos. So, uh, let me check. Uh, so fresh from I know fresh from the fresh from the bamboo U workshop, I built a DIY simple treatment tub. So, uh, it's a, it's a simple treatment uh, for a start in the farm to experiment with the treatment solution. These are made of seven steel drums welded together and treated some. Post for our very first bamboo structure in the farm. Uh, it's a it's a roof frame for our meditation deck there. So a uh, year after we started building one of the four I call it lift lounge at the farm's cafe. So uh, at that time we also uh, started experimenting the use of inakak or pin bamboo flooring, and we also use. Uh, for roofing, we use the polycarbonate roofing to protect the poles from the elements while 
while the diners will still able to look up uh, to the tree canopies above. So for the past two years, we have been designing and building the map of villas for a follow-on project. Uh, the reason of testing it in Cebu is also to train the local worker, workers before, uh, before going to the Palawan. Notice also the, uh, noticed here that my daughter, um, she's, she's on top of a bamboo model. So you can also test physically the structural capacity of your model versus the uh, actual, actual structural design of your uh, engineers. This one here, this is another villa we are building right now with some of the past participants uh, in Wulu. It's a two level structure on top of a mountain ridge. So last year, it has been an honor as well to host a four day comprehensive course in the farm by Bamboo Bootcamp. It's actually the first one in Visayas and we were able to share a regular full course in a compressed format and and build a footbridge and some furniture as well. So we are looking forward for the full course this coming July in Alibi Farm, Carmen Cebu. So I hope I have inspired some of the bamboo enthusiasts and start a journey to sustainability. So before I'll end this short five minute story, let me share with you a short video tour of the farm's bamboo cafe in Aguas. Thank you. Thanks, Marvs. Uh, that's the same bridge that we built during the carpentry training last yeah. uh, last year, right, Marbs? Yes, that uh, footbridge. Mm -mm. Yeah. And I think Marvin is already starting uh, per, uh, the principles of permaculture for his one hectare farm, hoping to mm -hmm. expand it more, right, Marbs? Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's 1.4 now. <laughs> 1.4. Uh, so... It's gonna keep on expanding, and um, the beauty about these structures, it has survived a death uh, since number one. Uh, there are trees that are surrounding it, which really help in buff buffering up the the you know, the from the elements, and also the mountain also protected your structures. So it, that is a very very nice touch for it. Thank you. Cool. So I guess it's safe to say that you're not anymore an enthusiast, right? Like you're 100% bamboo ang. <laughs> <laughs> a newbie bamboo ang. <laughs> oh, very yeah. nice. Thank you so much for your time, Marvs. Thank we you, as well. Thank you for sharing. I think we have a bamboo boot camp happening in Marvs Farm by uh, July. July, right? July. So July 21 to 30 is that I oh my god I'm getting <laughs> yes, yes July 21 to 30 all right cool all right so I'm gonna call on our next um surprise guest um is Renee here hi Renee how are hi, you hi Renee hi hi how are you <laughs> we're hi. good thank you so much for joining us today um so we would like for you to uh, to share with us the bamboo journey. I mean, uh, Hinaleban Farms as well as uh, Tuminugan Farms have, have been doing bamboo for quite some time. And I'm sure our viewers are interested to hear about your, your journey as well. Okay. Well, I didn't really present, I mean, prepare anything. <laughs> But I just have a, an old PowerPoint that I've been using throughout um, my tours that we do here in teaching. Um, so I'll just share this first. Okay. All right. So. Um, All right. So with uh, Hinduban, 
um yeah so here we go yeah so we decided to put a foundation in 2006 with the goal of reforesting the mountain ranges of Bukidnon and it reached out also to the farm um the name of the foundation is Hinduluban that was granted to us by the seven tribes of Bukidnon which means the mother tree of the rainforest that sustains the cycle of all life, which is presented by a bagugumu tree or a ficus tree. Um, we work with the seven tribes and the Bangsamoro through a sacred customary compact where we have universal values that we work, we base our work um, around. And this is our vision, we are stewards of God. We aspire to restore the high mountain rate forests of Mindanao from where the rainfall sweeps down the plains through the months of the year and where pure water and river flow in abundance. Um, our mission is that we are a God-centered organization united as one family with our diverse cultural communities. We share God's values of love, compassion, truthfulness, trustworthiness, and perseverance. We engage our high mountain forest communities and provide them sustainable livelihoods, thereby reviving the role of indigenous and Bangsamoro people as custodians of the forest. By doing so, we build bridges of peace and provides beacons of hope to those who have the least on the island of Mindanao in a partnership of equals, respecting the dignity of the unique culture of the indigenous and Bangsamoro people. So we've united the seven tribes and now we celebrate the peace and unity celebration. Uh, the last one was 2016 uh, with 1,500 IPs, including the youth already. This is where we work, where we feel that we will have the most environmental and social impact. Um, so we share with them our reforestation technology um this is one of our reforestation sites where we've reached an apex already attracting the philippine eagle because they have the food which is the kabog um, or or the bat right um, in this reforestation site we also have what they thought was already an endangered species the bukidnon woodcock um we also have the civet cats the philippine barking deer the kalau, the owl, the, um, and together with reforestation, we also introduce commercial tree species. So we consider part of the reforestation bamboo. Um, we've won the Philippine, I mean, the World Climate Change Award in 2015. But this is a slide show, this sh slide I wanted to really show. So this is our approach, climate resilient community housing. So we decided that bamboo would be good for that. Food security, um, a sustainable disposable income crop, which we have Arabica coffee, giant bamboo, adlai, abaca, and cacao right now. Uh, together with that is uh, we reforest together with the seven tribes. The seven tribes are partners, they're not outsourced growers. So for, um, for bamboo, we have 105 hectares um, of small partner holder farmers. So each one would have like one fourth hectare to about a hectare, some, some of them bigger. Um, coffee as well. So the farmers, the bamboo farmers make 150,000 pesos per month um, per hectare, which is pretty good. Imagine if you had 10 hectares, that's 1.5, right, a year. Um, and then we also do coffee. They make about 250,000 pesos per hectare if you're a good farmer. And then with Adlai, it's about net 40,000 per hectare per year. Um, our goal really is to help the indigenous people realize the original design of God for their community and the environment, uh, enhancing it and creating abundance, not just sustainability actually, which is a permaculture principle. 
Um, I'm a permaculture designer. I took a year course um, based out of Australia and uh, accepting permaculture um, students right now also in our farm for teaching that and I'm, I'm a accredited teacher. So with our, with our sustainable uh, program with indigenous people, we formed what we call a closed loop economy, right? So that's sustainability right there. So here's an example of our products and partner farmer farms. Um, we, we help process all of the products and create added value, right? So let me go straight to bamboo and skip the rest one second. So copy and lie. Okay, and then here we go. Bamboo is here, <laughs> sandali long. Um, here. Okay. So this is one of our partner farmers. And so we gave them the seedlings maybe 2010. So it's a 12 year old clump already. So each partner farmer would have at least one fourth hectare of um, bamboo. The rest would be reforestation or I'd like coffee, their, their family food security or kitchen garden at least. Um, this is the processing facility. We're in a partnership with Base Bahai, which we call Transformational Business Partnership. And these are the houses we've actually uh, provided bamboo to more or less 12 projects of Base Bahai. And uh, when when COVID happened, right before COVID happened, we started designing um, appropriate climate resilient homes for Mindanao. So we have IP design and the bump and the, so this is the IP design in the middle. And the one in the left is the Muslim or the Torugan Moro design. So that's about it. Do you have any questions? I think there's less than 10 minutes. <laughs> Thanks so much, Renee. Thank you for sharing. And maybe we can invite everybody. We're going to be in Bukidnon May 19 to 28. So if any of you guys are interested to see Renee's beautiful, productive uh, permaculture forest farm, <laughs> Um, that's going to be our host this coming May. So thanks again, Marvin and Renee. I'm going to move forward. So um, I guess I'll see you in a couple of weeks. No, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, <that's true. laughs> so <laughs> are you still in Bukidnon now? Yeah, I just came from the canyon. So and I don't have a hairdo, so I just put a hat. <laughs> oh, <laughs> still beautiful. Anyway, all right, moving forward. Thanks again, guys. Thanks, Marvin. Thanks, Renee. Mm -hmm. I'm going to share my screen to show off the different builds that we've done in um, the Bamboo Bootcamp uh, headquarters here in Baganihan, just so that you guys can see how much we really trust Bamboo. Um, can you guys see my screen, Jed? Can you confirm that you can see my screen? Yes, function F. Okay, <laughs> sorry. I don't know if that works, hold on. Um, view, full screen, there you go. Can you see that now? All right, yep. so this is what, okay. So when we first got here, um, this is 18 months in the making. This is Baganihan in Puting Bato. Uh, in Marilog here in Davao City. This was completely empty um, when we first started doing bamboo boot camps here. And this was this shot was actually taken around October of last year. So just to give you guys an idea of the progression, the Bellflower Pavilion that uh, we create we uh, did during the bamboo boot camp July batch uh, started out with the leftmost image and then um, so this is pretty much like a four month progression. And we finished this 
structure about November, December of last year. And this is what it looks like. I don't have a great picture. Jed had a better picture. Um, and this is a side project on the right is a butterfly pavilion. So our butterfly lounge, we were thinking what would be the perfect structure to put next to a bellflower? And we thought the butterfly would add a good um, addition to that. And we are starting to um, plant some herbs and uh, vegetables on this side, on this um, in between the bellflower and the butterfly pavilion. This is what we've done in several different bamboo bootcamp courses as well. Um, the right one was done by a carpentry course. Uh, actually, the first, the two, uh, the middle and the rightmost structures were done um, when we conducted a carpentry course. And the one on the leftmost was just the recent project did by our February bootcamp participants, as well as the gateway on the leftmost side of the photo. Uh, so this is another view. So you can see that there's going to be three different size villas. We just really wanted to show um, the strength of the bamboo as a structural member. member. Um, and we obviously believe in the strength of it because, you know, you know, the winds of this area, you know, are really strong and it, the rain goes sideways. So there's a lot of design challenges. Um, and we also opted for bamboo shingles or what, what is the technical term for taob kolob, Jed? <laughs> The obkulob, I guess that's the that's the best way to describe it, right? Like the cup, the inter half, half bamboo interlocked. Takluban in Tagalog. Ah, okay. Takluban. Thanks, Kalel. <laughs> Hi and thanks, Kalel. Um, so up close, this is what they are not completed yet. Um, you know, half the battle when building with bamboo is really waiting for the bamboo to arrive. Um, there's not a lot of bamboo in this area, so a lot of the bamboo that we use for construction are mostly imported into the area. We've planted about 25 hectares in the area, so hopefully in about 10 years we'll have stable supply and people here could enjoy more builds without the logistical challenges. Um, this is what the the villa looks like uh, a couple of weeks ago. So hopefully by then, you know, the next webinar we have will show you a little bit more finished look. Um, the visor will be covered in bamboo shingles and this is what it looks like from the inside. Um, for this build, we, we opted to use um, color roof, but uh, just for the white finish, actually Marvin, this was inspired by your house yes. in Alhibe. <laughs> I <laughs> enjoyed the white underlining. You know, it just added, I think it makes the bamboo pop. And then we will cover, uh, we will actually cover the top with uh, tad tad or sasa when supply permits. <laughs> nice. And then, so this is our very first build, the very first bamboo boot camp was done in Davao and we we built a 109 square meter, uh, I think 36 feet um, tall bamboo structure. It took about nine months to finish. Um, so I'll just show you the journey there. So this is how it looked during the boot camp. Um, on the other side, we started with the first layer of shingles or I guess flattened bamboo. And then this is what it looked like after the first layer of bamboo, flattened bamboo or sasa or tinadad. And this is what it looked like last February. Um, and it's finished, so it's totally functional now. This is the details of the inside and we're using it now as the classroom when we have workshops in Baganihan. So, um, you know, the reason that we show these pictures and examples is because we really just want to encourage and inspire people to use bamboo for construction and to show that it is possible and it does look absolutely beautiful. So that's it for my bit. Um, Jan, do we have any questions for Jed to answer? <laughs> <laughs> 
Not or, yet, so you can ask. I'm gonna, I'm gonna you. first uh, let us acknowledge our alumni that's kind of here today. Let me, Alvin, are you still there? Hi, I'm gonna unmute you so you can say hello. There you go. Hi, hello Hi, everyone. Alvin. Good evening. Ash three. <laughs> Ash three August last year, Alvin. Yeah. Can you tell us what you've been up to since the boot camp? Um, well, I'm still in the advocacy of um, promoting bamboo. So I've been active in with the Bamboo PH Network, posting some of the latest developments in bamboo. Also made some talks with the Arab group in their webinar series during the COP26 um, events, um, wherein we promoted bamboo as an alternative for timber. So a lot of this of more of advocacy work as, well, I'm not into design, and so I do more of um, sustainability certification for projects, and bamboo is really an alternative material that we've been promoting. Cool. Thanks, Alvin. Um, glad to have you here with us. Nice to Thank see you. you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, who else is here? Kalel, how are you? And hello, I'm fine. Okay, how naman. Oh, anong pa yeah. Oh. yeah, after ah, ako, ano nga pala ako, member ako ng Bamboo Boot Camp Batch 8. Batch 8. Oh. Batch 8 last February. So after uh, after nung graduation, I went back to our farm in Burgos, Pangasinan. It's a five-hectare land. Uh, primary is uh, bamboo, yung town namin. So after I came back, I was able to assess the situation there. Uh, I'm able to organize the LGU, DTI, DNR uh, to uh, form a bamboo rehabilitation and uh, sustainable propagation workshop. It will happen this uh, May. So this will help uh, the community to grow more bamboo because there was a time na masyadong mataas yung supply namin ng bamboo. However, there's no program for uh, replenishing the supply. So that's what we're doing now. At the same time, uh, yung property kasi namin, so it's one of the source and most ng mga nag-harvest doon is uh, not uh, that uh, well-educated on how to properly harvest so that you could prepare the clump for its next uh, harvest cycle. So that's one. And this coming June, we're organizing a run and bike, uh, uh, virtual run and bike, uh, bamboo run. No? So a run and bike for bamboo. It's like a, we call this uh, event. No? So it's uh, the toys. We encourage young athletes and anyone who wants to help in. Uh, planting bamboo, no? so it's a global event. So this campaign, uh, we're preparing for the World Bamboo Day uh, this coming September 18. So we want to plant as much as bamboo that we could all over the world. And yung proceeds ng uh, campaign na to, we will uh, uh, be putting it dun sa farm namin, sa mga farmers, and then dun sa community. And then we'll be tapping ambassadors also para um, you know, to help promote it and uh, at least they could benefit from it. So in proceeds that we get coming from it, they could benefit from it so to plant more on each uh, on the farms that they have. So that's the okay. goal. Namin. Oh, yeah. Yeah. See, thank you, Kalel. Inspired. <laughs> <laughs> Sige. All right, yeah. thanks so much for being here. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Yeah. All right, let me see. Archie, oh my God, Archie, how are you? Yeah. Hi, Archie, Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Jay. Cebu. Yeah. Batch, uh, batch six, Cebu. Part C. Bayong sa Cebu. Yeah. So how have you been? You know, I know you're. I've been seeing the photos of your treehouse. Meron ka bang mashare? Uh, unfortunately, I was not prepared to share anything for you. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> but uh, just, just uh, want to share my the story of my, of my uh, what I've been doing after the boot camp. Uh, so, uh, uh, baliktad kasi yung sa akin. I, I, I started, uh, I started having a project and then started to learn 
So I started with the utilization. So I started some projects and then I enrolled in some courses on uh, uh, treatment and like that. And then after after utilization, I started my own uh, treatment plan. And then after after knowing that there are shortages of supply, so I started my own plantation. And then I started. And now recently, I I have my own nursery na. So wow. So may around mga 3,000 propagules already. So hopefully I will sell some and then I plant some. <laughs> oh, well, that's good. Here. What was, can you invite our uh, to visit your bamboo build? Hopefully bamboo uh, it will be finished uh, mid, mid this year. So hopefully if you, maybe when, when you will be back in Cebu, it will be finished. Hopefully oh, okay. <laughs> I invite you. You invite uh, us to see it. We want to see it. Uh, and and then and also I, I've been active in the we have organized a Cebu Bamboo Industry Development Council, so just based in Cebu, oh. we have a lot of uh, stakeholders for bamboos here, and also we have organized a bamboo producers co-op. So we are propagating bamboo, we sell bamboo, and then starting to treat and sell also bamboo poles. All right, yes. sounds good. That's great progress. Mm. Since the last time we saw you, yeah. short time, big progress. Thank you so much and congratulations, Archie. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, these are some pictures of the tree house of our, ano, of Archie. <laughs> okay, but the, there's another one made of, ano, made of uh, with bamboo shingles being done. So hopefully, when it's finished, uh, Archie will be able to show it. Cool. Thank you so much, Archie. <laughs> Next one we have. Dun, 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 dun. We have Joshua. Joshua, where are you? Yeah. Hi, Josh. How are you? Okay. Hi. Hi. Good evening, everyone. Hello. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Okay, na ba? Narinig mo? Yes. Yeah. Kumusta ka man? Asa man ka? Ah, sa per farm na. Wow, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Hindi, uh, busing eh. May tulog kay busing. Kasal eh. Kumusta man? Hi. Hi everyone. I'm Joshua working with Egypt Foundation. Uh, I'm sali akong sa bootcamp sa Davao. For, uh, first batch ba kamo? Sa Davao. Batch 1. Oh, batch 1, yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, after the bootcamp, what makes me busy is actually our foundation, which is with Sir Alec Van Van Deren Dong and Mam Silini, is working with the Ubu Manubu tribe here in Dao. So, ang focus namin is forest protection and reforestation. So, uh, ang pinaka pinaka advocate, uh, pinaka work, pin win work namin so far is yung how to integrate bamboo in reforestation kasi uh, yun sa problema kasi may mga area dito sa Davao na nagtatanim lang sila bamboo na lahat so which is I'm a field biologist by profession so biodiversity wise wala talagang mga wildlife na mabubuhay pag bamboo lang lahat so as what Sir Jed tell us before so kailangan natin integrate yung mga bamboos as the sustainable livelihood. So, yeah, isa sa pinaka, pinaka recent na nasa lihat ko is yung project ni Manny Pinyul <laughs> to plant bamboo, monocrops bamboo around, in the Arakan area. So, pinupush, pinupush talaga ng foundation namin na bamboo is not good for wildlife. Kung bamboo lang talaga. But if yeah. we do some integration with forest trees, road trees, Mm. Yun, pwede rin. Pwede, mag magagawa natin yan. We have this project, so pwede, natin, pwede namin itong mag-model kasi we have partners with Obo Manobo. One hectare kami, tinawag namin itong project na sustainable reforestation, which is we, including, we include bamboo 
in our in the sustainable representation project. So hopefully makita nyo yung mga model pro, model project namin for show uh, para i showcase. Then isa din sa naturo namin ngayon is yung may mga bamboo planting before na nasagawa sa Ubu Manobo tribe which is strategically hindi talaga tama ang pagtanim. So what we did is we transfer all this bamboo. So isa yun sa ginagawa namin kasi we are not advocating for only for this uh, for uh, sustainable livelihood. We also advocating sustainable wise, sustainably wise na, na environment. So so uh, so far uh, hopefully matulung matulungan natin kasi ang tribe, ang ibang organization is is gumagawa sila ng mga trip uh, bamboo planting na hindi talaga uh, kasi naka-train na tayo gamitin natin 'yon uh, is, hindi talaga tama yung pagtatanim nila kung saan nila tinatanim so pas tulungan tayo para magawa natin 'yon that's all thank you so thank you, much thank you, Sir It was okay. nice to see you as well. So, John, do we have any questions? Or it's 9.08. We are eight minutes over. But hey, if we have any questions, we can still entertain some. Yep. John, are you here? They haven't submitted any questions, but we can ask our participants here. We can maybe... Okay. Do we have any questions from our participants? <laughs> They're quite shy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to ano, Attorney Dulce. I'm seeing Attorney yes. Dulce in ano, among our participants. Also Hi, to Nini Matilak. <laughs> yeah. All right, I guess. Hello. Is someone talking? Hi, Attorney mm. Dulce. Good evening. Hi, good evening. Uh -oh. Uh, good evening. I just like to congratulate, of course, uh, Architect Jed and Rika and all the bamboo booth campers. Uh, I can relate sa mga naranasan niyo because I was also in Bali and in uh, Thailand, no, sa Chiang Mai, uh, when I was learning no, to do the bamboo build. And since yung collective experience natin, ito ah, pag pag, pag pag ano na ako, mag announce na ako officially. So, um, as many of you know, I'm one of the 42 World Bamboo Ambassadors kasama si Brian Makalilad at saka si Mameli uh, Barcelona. We're inviting you sa Bamboo Build <laughs> sa Vietnam. Ayun, di ba? So, yung, yung collective experiences natin sa kanya-kanyang initiative at yung natutunan natin, regardless of which batch, uh, you belong to, I'm, I will be extending the invitation to you sa September 2022, five days yun, World Bamboo Workshop sa Vietnam. Ang magiging, uh, may, baka may mga sumali dun sa competition, no? kasi nagkaroon ng international design competition. So, uh, I will be sending through, through Jed and, and Rika the details for that if you yeah. want to participate. Yes, para we can prepare early. Tapos, <laughs> meron ito second second good news merong libre for those who are interested naman for engineered bamboo kasi ang naririnig ko palagi yung word na sustainability eh, di ba lahat yun ang aim natin mm. so magkakaroon po ng special workshop sa May 17 to 19 online you can register Uh, isi-send ko rin yung link kay Rika sa kay Jed sa Bamboo Bootcamp Team yung Engineered Bamboo for Sustainable Construction uh, which will be mentored by some of the mentors that we had and our colleagues in ISO uh, Technical Committee for Bamboo and Rattan especially yung binanggit ni Jed importante kasi matutunan natin yun no? yung grading ng bamboo hands para siguradong maganda yung quality. At saka yung bagong na ilabas na yung ISO 22156 regarding sa structures. So kanina nabanggit din po ni Jed uh, yung mga standards na inailabas na. Uh, I'm one of the conveners. Dalawa kaming Pilipino. 
na convener ng ISO, Technical Committee for Bamboo and Rattan, si Dr. Tabangon, ang convener para sa laminated or engineered bamboo for furniture. That's working group 5 of ISO. Siya rin ang chairperson ng technical committee ng Bureau of Philippine Standards for Bamboo and Rattan. Ako naman po yung vice chair sa technical committee dito sa Pilipinas. And then I am the convener for bamboo charcoal. So may goodness din doon. Ang, ang tatlo na yung uh, nailabas na standard. So yung generalities, yung pangalawa, yung purification. Kanina pre-nesent ni Jed dito eh, di ba? At saka pangatlo yung fuel, biofuel, energy generation. At may pang-apat. So yung tatlo, you can avail of that. Mag-contact lang po kayo sa Bureau of Philippine Standards. Pwede nyo na po makuha yung PNS. Kasi in na natin doon. At pang-apat, malapit na rin sa, nailabas na rin ng bamboo flooring. Indoors. So I was also part of the technical committee for that. And then may isang ilalabas soon ang outdoors naman. So tuloy-tuloy yeah. na tayo, di ba? Oh. Dito sa ating journey yes. together. Yes. Yeah. Maraming salamat. Thank All you right. so much. Thank you very much, attorney. <laughs> so happy to oh. see you again, Lika. Yeah. <laughs> Last year, di ba? Sa stories for a better normal. Yeah. Oo. <laughs> okay. And yeah. I think there's a question pala, Rix, on ano, on if ever we will have a Luzon uh, boot camp <laughs> this We're year. We're working on that. We're working yeah, on that. Yeah, to be announced. Hopefully we can announce that before before the year is over we're really trying you know um we're gonna wait to what happens after election see if yeah. you know we can't forget that there is still a pandemic going on so we still have to be safe and super careful about where we go and what we do so we will definitely let you know i think the question comes from michelle i hope michelle that tan yeah, okay, cool. All right, everyone, it's 9.14. I know you guys are, you know, wanting to go to bed or get your weekend started. So thanks again for everybody that came and watched us live. Hope we can do this again. I hope you learned something. If you have any questions or you want to know when the next boot camps are, you can definitely face message us on Facebook or visit our website at bamboobootcamp.org. Right. Thanks, guys. Oh, ano? I group family photo. Family photo. <laughs> family photo. Family photo. Dan, can we turn all our um cameras Gallery on view. for a few minutes and then we can all take pictures of our screens? How do we do that? Gallery um, view. Gallery yeah. view. Okay, there you go. All right, cool. Let me take one photo first. <laughs> um, can we ask everyone to turn their videos on so we can take a picture yeah. quick picture guys <laughs> right all, all right, right. Let me see if i can do this all right one two three smile okay. how you on <laughs> all right thanks guys it was so nice to be with you tonight see you okay. soon good night everyone good night okay. good night bye. good night take care guys bye